This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In previous videos, we've constructed and applied materials to our bowling alley scene. What we'll do now is add some light to the work that we've done. Using a file named Bowling Alley Lighting, which can be found in the Working Files folder for this chapter, let's see what we can do. We'll start by throwing a little light onto the back walls positioned behind the pins. Wanting that illumination to be more directional in nature, we'll use a spotlight to create our effect. With a spot acting very much the way a flashlight works, having the light shine in only the direction that it's pointed, we'll create the light at the top of the wall, having it point down to the floor. We can most easily do that, creating our spot in the front view. Let's activate that window using the Alt-W keyboard shortcut, and we'll take it full screen. Let's now go into the Create tab in the right-hand panel, accessing the lights. A spotlight is a standard type light in Max, so we'll change from photometric down to standard. Having two spots to choose from, a target and a free, we'll choose the target spot. Let's now make that on the right-hand side of the bowling alley wall. Starting at the top of the wall, I'll drag the light down to the bottom of the floor. Once the light's positioned, I'll name the light Wall Spot Right. OK, I'll then activate the viewport, heading back to four views with the Alt-W shortcut. Having our view using the Scene Lights configuration, you can see the difference that's made in our lighting. Now, if for some reason your scene is still fully lit, do this. Activate the Perspective view, heading up to the left-hand corner, clicking on Realistic. In the menu, you'll have to drop down to Lighting and Shadows and turn on Illuminate with Scene Lights. You'll also want to make sure that the Shadows option is also checked. So we can all end up matching the same scene position for both our light and its target, let's type in our positional values. With the Spotlight selected, let's right-click on the Move command on the toolbar. Using the absolute world settings on the top left side, let's type in these X, Y, and Z values. We'll take X to 685, Y to 1000, and Z will set at 800. You can hit the Tab key on your keyboard to go from one value field to the next. Once our numbers are in place, let's go ahead and select the spot's target. For its type and values, let's do this. We'll take X to 685. Y will set at 1100. That'll angle the light a little bit back toward the wall. For Z, we'll set that value at 0. You can do that by simply right clicking on either of the Z value spinners. OK, with those numbers in place, we can now close the Type In dialog, then render our perspective view. We can activate the render up on the right hand side of the toolbar, clicking on Render Production. With the spotlight specifically designed to only light certain areas of the scene, why don't we now add a little overall fill light to brighten things up some? We'll do that using an Omni light. Let's close the render, then head back to the Create Lights column to get the Omni. You'll find that in the left hand column, third button down. Let's activate that, then drop the Omni in the top view in the lower left hand area. Once in play, let's pull back a little bit in the front view and we'll push the Omni up toward the top part of the screen. Let's now name that light Omni Fill Left. Again, so we can all match the same position, let's type in our values by right clicking on the Move icon. Here we go. For X, let's use minus 1400. Y will take the negative 425 and the Z value will set at 1500. With the numbers locked in, let's again render our perspective view. Why don't we brighten up the Omni just a tad? Back in the right hand column, with the Omni selected, we'll open up the Intensity Color Attenuation section. The brightness of the light will be controlled by its multiplier. Let's take that number to 1.3. Wanting to also add shadows onto the light, let's move a little farther up, activating the Shadow command.
sticking with the shadow map shadow type will work just fine. OK, let's go ahead and render again. Getting back to work on our wall spot, let's close the render and reselect our spotlight. As we make some fine tuning adjustments, we'll be able to better see our results by activating a floating active shade window. Now we can do that by holding down on the Render Production Toolbar icon, then choosing the last command in the flyout menu that opens. Before heading up to the toolbar, though, let's reactivate our perspective viewport. OK, on the Render Production icon, holding down, we'll choose the last command. The Active Shade window now gives us a live connection back to our scene. Any changes we now make to our light will automatically re-render the Active Shade window. Let's adjust just how far the light spreads from side to side. That'll be controlled on the light using its Hotspot and Falloff settings. Back in the right-hand column, let's click on the Spotlight Parameters tab. Now, the fall off will set the overall distance the light will shine from side to side. Let's take that value to 70. Notice the active shade automatically re rendering and the light now spreading more side to side. The light's hotspot value will control how long the light will stay at full strength as it approaches the edge of the area that it's illuminating. Let's take that value to 50. With our two numbers not being right on top of each other, you can see the feathering effect that we're getting on the light's edge. Our wall spot will also want its shadows activated. Now we can stay in the right-hand column, or instead we can right-click on the light, then choose Cast Shadows from the menu. I'll do the latter. To have those results viewable in our active shade, we'll have to reinitialize the render. We can do that by right-clicking directly in the window. From the menu, in the lower right-hand square, we'll click on Initialize. Let's also turn the light's Show Cone option on so we can see how far the light is shining from side to side, even when the light is not selected. You'll find that option directly above the Hotspot Falloff settings in the Spotlight Parameters category. To the left of Show Cone, simply activate the checkmark. OK, with that light pretty much now in place, let's go ahead and instance it to the other side of the wall, opposite side of the pins. We'll close our active shade, taking our front view full screen with the Alt-W shortcut. To grab both sides of the light, not just the light but also its target, we'll click on the line that connects the two together. Let's now make our clone using the Move command and the Shift key option. Grabbing the red stick on the transformation gizmo, we can now slide the light over to the left-hand side. When the Clone Options dialog opens, make sure to set things to Instance, and we'll rename the light Wall Spot Left. Once both of those are in place, we can click OK at the bottom right side of the dialog. Because we instance the light, anything that we do to one of our wall spots will automatically carry over to the other. Let's take our layout back to four views using Alt-W. We can now go ahead, with the Perspective View active, reactivate our active shade. Let's now work on just exactly how far down the wall the two spots are shining. Remember, normally, lights are designed to shine on forever. We can change and adjust that using a control called Attenuation. With either of the two spotlights selected, let's head back to the Modify column. We'll now want to open the tab labeled Intensity Color Attenuation. The attenuation range we'll be adjusting is the FAR attenuation. Go ahead and click on Use. Let's begin by taking the start range on the FAR attenuation to 200. This will control just how far down the wall the light will stay at full strength. Looking in your front view, you can see the attenuation ring situated just below the spot. For the end range, let's set that to 500. This setting will control just how far down the wall the light will shine. We'll probably need to take that value a little bit higher. Let's try 750. Let's see how 1000 would look. To get a little bit more of both lights shining down on the floor, let's take that end range to 1250. Taking your attention back to the front view, you can now see how the lighter blue ring, the far attenuation range, drops below the floor level. 
Now, as far as the color of our two spots, task lighting is typically more on a bright white side. So I think leaving things the way they are will work just fine. If you do want to change the color of your light, you'll find that color swatch just to the right of the multiplier control. Okay, why don't we now add a little bit of volume light into the mix? Creating another spotlight that will position behind and to the upper right hand side of the alley. Once in the scene, we'll add the volume, then link the target of the light to the bowling ball. That way, wherever the ball goes, the volume light will follow, kind of tracking the ball as it heads toward the pins. Let's close our active shade, heading into the front view full screen. Back in the command panel, we'll prepare ourselves to create another target spot. Let's now drop that in the scene, starting in the upper right hand corner, placing the target close to the ball on the alley. Once things are in position, let's return to four viewports using Alt W. Let's rename the light Volume Spot, and we'll right click on the Move Command icon to reactivate the Type In Transform. For the light's position in the scene, staying with the absolute values on the left hand side, Let's type in these numbers. We'll take X to 1000, Y to negative 1000, and for Z, we'll type in 1000 again. Once the numbers are in place, we can go ahead and close the Type In Transform. OK, to set the position of the target, let's activate our top view, zooming closer in on the bowling ball. Let's now select the target, then using the Link command, link it back to the bowling ball. Once we've done that, let's verify that things have connected together by selecting the ball, activating the Move command, and moving the ball from one side to the other. If we've made the proper association, the target on the spot should now track the position of the ball. To ensure that the target's directly in the middle of the ball, let's reselect the target and on the toolbar activate the Align command. You'll find the command up on the right hand side. We'll activate the Align command, then click anywhere on the surface of the bowling ball. In the dialog, we'll make sure that all three X, Y, and Z positions are activated, and we'll take the Current Object and Target Object options both to center. Once you've made the needed changes, you can go ahead and click Apply or simply click OK, both at the bottom of the dialog. Let's now go back and select the spot so we can add our volume. Now the controls for that are going to be found a little further down in the settings on the right. You'll want to open a category called Atmospheres and Effects. Once the tab's been opened, click the Add button, then in the dialog, select Volume Light. With the perspective you selected, let's now do a regular render. The reason I change over from Active Shade is because Active Shade won't show the volume light. OK, now we obviously have a few changes we're going to need to make. Back on the light, we'll first activate the Shadow option, then we'll head down to the Hotspot Falloff controls. Let's change the Falloff value to 15, and we'll take the Hotspot to 5. Let's go ahead and render again, and we'll see what changes that's made. OK, now it's simply a matter of lightening up on the density of our volume. Heading back to the Atmosphere and Effects category, let's click on the Volume Light, then the button that reads Setup. In the Volume Light parameters, on the right hand side, we'll take our density from 5 down to 1. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and render again. Now, the smoke might still be a little bit too thick. Let's lower our density to 0.5. Setting the number, then re rendering, you see that creates a nice effect. Now, let's close the render and verify that the light is indeed tracking the ball. Back in the perspective view, let's select the bowling ball, then move it closer back to the ball return. You'll want to lock down onto the Y or green transformation stick when you move the ball. OK, for one more check, let's move the ball now closer to the pins. Very good, it looks like we're getting the results that we're wanting. Let's go ahead and move the ball and the target on the light back to somewhere around the middle of the alley. Now, as a final step, we probably want to add just a little bit more light coming from the back or rear side of the scene. 
again using it as a little extra fill. Let's go into our top view and locate our OmniLight. Holding down the Shift key, we'll now copy that Omni over to the right-hand side of the view. Once in position, we'll want to make sure to make this a copy, and we'll name it Omni Fill Right. For its position in the scene, let's again, up on the toolbar, right-click on the Move command. Using the absolute world values, let's type in these numbers. We'll take X to 3400, Y to minus 100, and Z will set at 2200. Closing the dialog and rendering the perspective view, let's see how that looks. OK, now the light does look a little bit too bright. Let's go ahead and lower its multiplier to about 0.6. We're also getting a little bit of unwanted shadow on the left-hand side of our ball return. Let's see how things would look if we turned off the shadow casting capability of that Omni. Rendering again, that solves the problem. OK, that's going to do it for the lighting. We've got some illumination back on the walls, we've got a little general fill light, and we've got a volume spot that's going to now track the ball as it rolls down the alley. The only thing we'll now need to do to wrap up the project is to animate a few things in the scene. We'll do that in our chapter on animation. With things in place, let's go ahead and save our scene out as Bowling Alley Lighting Completed.